Celebrate with us as we join together this January 13th in honoring the life, teaching, and legacy of Georgi Ivanovich Gurdjieff. We begin with a reading from Mr. Gurdjieff's Legomenism, All and Everything, and listen to piano compositions of his sacred music. A menu of specially selected delicacies has been prepared. This is an evening of celebration. We gather here tonight to celebrate the birth of Mr. Gurdjieff on the planet Earth and his bringing the teaching of the fourth way, which is really the first way. And coming to Russia in 1912, he began to gather students in Russia, then England, France, and he finally came to America and gathered students there. And from there, throughout, until his departure from Paris in 1949. We celebrate him and all his students, our spiritual ancestors. To Mr. Gurdjieff and the spiritual ancestors. In 1912, Mr. Gurdjieff arrives in Moscow and forms a group of students in order to actualize his sacred task to establish the teaching that would awaken in men and women the sacred impulse conscience still surviving in the subconscious. Pictured here and in later time periods are some of those who became students of Mr. Gurdjieff. Having led his students out of Russia through the Caucasus Mountains to Georgia, then Turkey, and finally in 1924, he establishes in Avon, France, near Fontainebleau, his Institute for the Harmonious Development of Man, known as the Priory. Students arrive from England, America, and elsewhere. They learn the sacred practices of self-remembering and self-observation through work with embodied attention, while cutting wood, tending the garden, cooking, and learning the special sacred dances demanding specific inner work in connecting the three centers. 1924 is also the year that Mr. Gurdjieff would make his first visit to America. But in that same year, he would suffer an automobile crash on July 8th, leaving him in a two-month coma, after which he begins for the first time to dictate his legomenism, that is, his initiatory text all and everything. By 1933, unable to meet mortgage payments, Mr. Gurdjieff loses the Priory and is now living in Paris. At this time, the first series of All and Everything, titled Beelzebub's Tales to His Grandson, and the second series titled Meetings with Remarkable Men, are completed manuscripts. He writes and publishes The Herald of Coming Good, and afterwards, Mr. Gurdjieff begins the third series, Life is Real Only Then When I Am. During the latter half of the 1930s, Mr. Gurdjieff forms The Rope, a group of women who become some of his most loyal students. Earlier at the Priory and throughout until his death, the first series of All and Everything is read aloud. And during this period, the Ladies of the Rope report readings of the second series as well. Listening to the readings, Mr. Gurdjieff could study how the words resonated in the listeners, allowing him to fine-tune the vibratory effect of the words, which were now his means to carry forward the transmission of the teaching. In 1940, as German troops enter and occupy Paris, Mr. Gurdjieff's apartment becomes the spiritual refuge. Transcripts of meetings held during this time are a testament to the seriousness and genuine courage of the students. Not once is there found a reference to ordinary life conditions under Nazi occupation. On the contrary, the small space, 
packed with dozens of students each night, speak their questions resounding with the single aim to awaken. Following the war, many more students come from England, America, and other places. He takes many trips with students to the countryside, including the caves of Lascaux, always teaching, those ready to receive, always learning. The meetings and readings continue. Mr. Gurdjieff says, finish this last book, my work will be done, my task in life coming to an end. On October 21st, 1949, Mr. Gurdjieff sees the first proofs of the American edition of All and Everything. On the 29th of October, 1949, Mr. Gurdjieff leaves the body. Before he died, Mr. Gurdjieff had asked Madame de Salzman to continue the work worldwide, and he appointed Lord John Pentland to lead the work in America. To our spiritual father, Mr. Gurdjieff, and to his students, our spiritual ancestors, we offer our work in gratitude. The work is to be able to do. Everybody's doing constantly, everywhere, six billion people. But to do in Mr. Gurdjieff's way is first to be and then to do. We are there consciously for the doing. At Prairie West, we began to work to a degree that there was very little to do. So what to do? We had to find a new place. That began in the early 2000s, believe it or not. And we looked from there until 2015, July 27, and we found this place and signed Sonoma County, the Ivanovich Ranch. It has enough acreage and houses and landscape that we can be here for quite a few years before we may have to get a larger place, who knows. But one of the things that we had to work on, the primary project, was where we're sitting right now. It was a multi-dimensional garage that was not well taken care of at all. The only thing that exists from that time till now is the roof. All of this is new. All of it. And people worked on it from September when we started until December when it was finally finished. It was an incredible project, along with all the other projects of landscaping and building uh, bathrooms and so forth and so on. But here we are right now in the retreat center of Ironovich Ranch that was done in terms of being and doing.